Have you ever tried to predict what SpaceX's Starship version 3 will achieve in 2026, whether it's the number of launches or the milestones it could reach? The answer likely depends on one mission. Flight 12, the debut of Block 3. Its success or failure will set the pace for everything SpaceX hopes to accomplish this year. According to a recent FCC permit, the launch could take place as early as April. However, SpaceX may move up that timeline as a full ship-to-ship -ship refueling test is planned for June. A two-month window is a tight schedule for the company to take a completely new generation of Starship to orbit and demonstrate part or full reusability, two milestones it has yet to achieve. SpaceX also needs to increase the number of Starship launches in 2026 to validate Block 3 technologies on schedule for NASA's Artemis 3 mission, planned for mid-2027. Whether SpaceX reaches its 2026 goals depends heavily on a smooth debut for version 3. This explains the intense interest surrounding Flight 12, which will serve as a crucial proving ground for new technologies. The mission will also debut upgrades to Pad 2, which will later be mirrored at Pad 1, Launch Complex 39A, and SLC-37 on the East Coast. Flight 12 introduces the full Block 3 Starship stack, consisting of Booster 19 and Ship 39. Compared to the Block 2 design, Block 3 offers improved structural strength and greater payload capacity. The booster is essentially a clean sheet redesign, while the ship has been significantly upgraded. This mission will also showcase the Raptor 3 engine, the most advanced engine SpaceX has ever built. The new Raptor is roughly 25% lighter than its predecessor, delivers about 280 tons of thrust, and achieves a higher specific impulse of around 350 seconds. A key objective of Flight 12 is to conduct the final Raptor relight test before the next flight. Flight 13 attempts orbit. This step is vital because version 3 uses the simplified Raptor 3 engine design, which lacks a heat shield. Reliable engine restarts are essential for controlled re-entry and recovery, making this test a critical prerequisite for orbital operations and future payload missions. Another major change is the new integrated hot staging ring. Unlike earlier bolt-on designs, the new ring is built directly into the Super Heavy's forward dome and methane tank structure. This integrated setup removes the need for a separate jettisonable component and includes triangular vents that allow exhaust gases to escape more efficiently during ignition. The result is reduced heat and pressure stress on the booster, a simpler assembly process, and no need for pre-launch installation. The permanent ring integration cuts weight, increases payload capacity by up to 10%, and works in tandem with three larger grid fins, down from four, positioned lower for compatibility with the catching system. Flight 12 will test the full reliability of this system during stage separation. Ship 39 is expected to debut with an upgraded heat shield that introduces a new crunch wrap sealing material. This design helps close small gaps between tiles, improving both maintenance speed and heat protection. Structurally, Ship 39 represents a major shift in Starship's design approach. Starships. Imagine the rocket body as a tall soda can made of metal. The old design cuts the can into short horizontal rings, like donuts. Weld each ring to the one above, charts below it. Lots of circular welds around the rocket equal many weak spots when wind heat pushes sideways. Instead, the new design cuts one tall rectangular sheet, rolls it into a tube, weld just one straight seam running top to bottom, like a zipper down the side. Fewer welds stronger because they match the push direction during flight. The new way spreads force evenly, like load-bearing walls in a skyscraper versus just floor joints. These changes matter because the nose cone endures some of the highest stress and heating levels on the entire vehicle. A more robust design increases the likelihood that version 3 can perform, as intended, under real mission conditions. SpaceX aims for Flight 12, or, at the latest, the second Block 3 mission, to achieve what it considers a perfect test flight. That means following a high arc trajectory similar to flights 5 through 11, reaching altitudes of 200 to 300 kilometers before performing controlled splashdowns. 
This approach allows engineers to validate Block 3's navigation and propulsion systems under realistic conditions, much like the soft splashdowns of earlier Block 1 and 2 flights in the Indian Ocean. This conservative flight plan ensures clean, high-quality data on the new systems before the subsequent flight attempts more advanced goals like orbital flight, ship catching, and propellant transfer tests. While upper stage Raptor 3 testing will provide critical data for future refueling missions, the upgraded ground systems at Pad 2 are also key to faster launch turnarounds. Flight 12 will mark the first operational use of the newly completed Pad 2 at Starbase. Pad 2 features a new foundation design, a stainless steel framework filled with concrete, unlike Pad 1's traditional concrete base with steel cladding. The new foundation stands about 1.5 meters taller than Pad 1's, likely to accommodate the increased height of next-generation booster stages. Larger doors and improved access points also make it easier for teams to reach internal components during maintenance. The new chopsticks on Pad 2, SpaceX's third set, are about 10 meters shorter than those on Pad 1. The reduced mass improves responsiveness during catch operations, while additional reinforcement reduces flexing during fast movements. These upgrades reflect SpaceX's effort to make each launch pad iteration more durable, efficient, and precise than the last. The Pad 2 launch mount introduces a bold new structural design. Unlike Pad 1's circular donut-shaped mount, Pad 2 features a large cuboid frame with a central circular opening for booster integration. It still uses 20 hold-down clamp arms, but each has been redesigned from the ground up for greater strength and reliability. The top of the Pad 2 mount also features a major advancement involving a fully water-cooled steel plate, similar in concept to the one first tested beneath Pad 1 during Flight 2. This new version is expected to handle the immense heat and force of repeated Starship launches with far greater durability. In another major difference, Pad 2 adds an integrated flame trench, something Pad 1 lacked. At Pad 1, exhaust gases were deflected outward after liftoff from a flat steel plate cooled by upward water sprays. Pad 2, by contrast, directs the exhaust downward into the trench, where a network of high-pressure water jets from various directions rapidly cools the exhaust and reduces noise and vibration. The upgraded deluge system represents one of the most substantial improvements over Pad 1. Pad 2's pumps can deliver roughly 422,000 gallons of water at much higher pressure, with jets positioned not only on the main plate, but also along the trench walls, the central ridge, and the plate perimeter. This multi-angle coverage ensures complete protection from the intense thrust of 33 Raptor 3 engines firing simultaneously. Another advantage of the new system is water recycling. Pad 2 can capture and reuse water between test runs, allowing same-day relaunch attempts if needed. While both systems convert much of the water to steam during operation, Pad 2's efficiency and sustainability mark a clear step forward in SpaceX's infrastructure. Anyway, if you enjoyed this breakdown of SpaceX's Starship plans, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next update on SpaceX's progress. As SpaceX prepares to begin regular operations from Pad 2, attention has turned to how frequently the company can fly Starship in 2026. Predictions vary widely. Cautious analysts expect between three and six launches this year, noting that early test phases often bring delays as new systems are refined. A moderate outlook suggests seven to ten launches, with many calling seven or eight the most realistic target if progress continues smoothly. Optimistic forecasts reach higher, projecting 12 to 15 flights, roughly one per month, assuming no major setbacks. More ambitious models imagine as many as 15 to 20 launches, achievable only if orbital refueling becomes operational by spring and both pads can support regular flights by year's end. The most aggressive predictions, topping out between 30 and 50 launches, assume full and rapid reusability is proven by mid-year, an outcome that would redefine what's possible for large-scale spaceflight. So, what do you think? 
How many Starship launches are you betting on for 2026? Let me know in the comment section below. The number of Starship launches in 2026 will depend largely on how quickly SpaceX resolves technical challenges and establishes reliable spacecraft reuse. First and foremost, as said, if the first Starship version 3 launch proceeds smoothly, without major setbacks, SpaceX could achieve 10 to 12 missions this year. However, any serious failure early in the program would likely cause delays and force a reworked schedule. Second, reuse and mission cadence. Reusable hardware remains essential to SpaceX's lunar goals. To support the required number of tanker flights for the Artemis program, Starship must reach a steady launch rate, ideally one flight per month or more. Without that cadence, meeting lunar milestones becomes unlikely. Production capacity will also play a key role. If the company cannot implement rapid reuse quickly, the rate at which new ships are built could limit progress. A successful first flight of version 3 would clear the path for recovery and catch attempts on subsequent missions. Successfully catching both the booster and the ship would mark full-stack reusability, removing major hardware bottlenecks for the rest of the year. Infrastructure and Manufacturing At present, Pad 2 at Starbase, Texas, is expected to be the primary operational pad through 2026. The pace of launches will also depend on when Pad 2 reaches full readiness, when Pad 1 completes refurbishment, and when Launch Complex 39A in Florida comes online. Despite these logistical challenges, vehicle availability is unlikely to hold back the program. SpaceX's Star Factory already houses at least 10 ships and three boosters in various stages of assembly, suggesting that production can support a busy launch schedule once reusability is proven.